While new tonight, a form of relief could be on the way for Spokane's housing crisis. The Spokane City Council unanimously passed two zoning changes. Ian Smay details what areas it will impact and what it will look like. The proposed changes came after the city says landowners asked for zoning updates to accommodate building plans. This is a yearly process for the city and it takes about 10 to 14 months. Two of the five proposed changes dealt with upping the number of units that could be built on certain lots in Spokane. One of those is on East Cleveland Avenue, while the other is on West Sinto and West Maxwell Avenues. Both of these proposals were passed unanimously, meaning buildings with at least 110 or more new housing units could be built in Spokane. According to a representative for one of these property owners, they do plan on building more units in response to the housing crisis. Uh, we believe that this change will have a positive impact as well, not only on the neighborhood by developing what is currently vacant land, but on Spokane generally uh, in our present housing crisis. Putting otherwise vacant land to its highest and best use uh, should be a priority. Even with the proposals passing, developers will still have to go through building permit processes, so any developments wouldn't start right away. A planner with the city also said that 110 number is more of a range of how much can be built, as the ranges are given per acre. Developers can choose to use part of the property for things like parking or landscaping. As this is a yearly process, the city council will likely be deciding on more zoning change proposals next year around this same time. In the newsroom, Ian Smay, Crem 2 News. Well, another tough game for the Seahawks tonight. A 17-15 loss to the Washington football team, and the score certainly doesn't indicate how poorly Seattle played tonight. Somehow, the Seahawks actually had a chance in this game. With 22 seconds left, down eight, Russell Wilson finding Freddie Swain for a 32-yard touchdown. Still down two, so you got to get the two-point conversion to tie it up, and they decide, hey, just work through the air. We're going to try it again through the air. Wilson looking for Swain again. But this time he's picked off. The late game heroics fall just short as the Seahawks lose their third straight and their sixth in the past seven games. And now their record sits at three and eight on the season. Disappointed. Just disappointed. It's frustrated. You know, we're frustrated. Obviously, this is not how we wanted things to go. Um, you know, we just got to figure out how to get some wins. The results just aren't coming, man. We can't, we can't get these games won. And um, you know, what? Uh, I'm not accepting it, and uh, I'm not taking the sideways step. I'm not stepping anywhere but forward, and going to keep driving to get the very next chance we get and go get a win and get going. A lot of stepping from Pete there. New week, same problem for the Seahawks, who have been allergic to third downs all season. Ranked 31st in the league heading into this week, and yet again, it strikes back. They finished the game 4 for 12 on third, and at one point in the fourth, they were 2 for 10. If that isn't enough, Seattle was only able to muster 34 rushing yards, 12 of which were on a Russell Wilson scramble. Just 10 first downs all night, and if it weren't for that final drive, that number would be 6. Here's Pete Carroll on the offensive struggles. The third downs don't let us go, you know, and, and uh, that's it's just such an obvious issue for us that we're not converting. Uh, now we didn't run the ball well at all tonight, and uh, but it's just there's so few plays that every single play counts so much, and, and uh, we're just not getting it going. And Washington's offense was exactly what Seattle was not. The football team was able to run all over the Seahawks. Antonio Gibson finished with 111 yards on the ground on 29 carries. Just pounding the rock was their plan. 152 total yards running the ball. The football team had 27 first downs compared to the Seahawks 10. And with all the running, they would control the clock with about 42 minutes of time of possession in a 60-minute game. The score really doesn't show it, but this was a domination. All right, let's not have all doom and gloom. At least the Seahawks had the play of the game. A big man score on a football team PAT attempt. Rasheem Green, the power of the last name, baby, blocks the kick and recovers it himself and proceeds to take it 75 yards to the house. That's 280 pounds of beef just outrunning everyone out there. Hey, at least we got that, Jen. At least we got that. You're right. You know, we're going to take our wins where we can get them. <laughs> Travis, thank you.
All right. Well, for late November, it certainly does not feel like it, right? Cody Proctor is joining us now from the Outdoor Weather Center. Cody, 44 degrees right now. What exactly is going on with Mother Nature? I mean, we've had that ridge of high pressure that's kept things warm for the last couple of days. We actually broke a record yesterday that was older than the state after I checked that out. I will say out here after the last few minutes, it doesn't feel very warm, but that's what happens when you're here for a few minutes. But you're right, 44 degrees right now. South wind at 10 miles per hour at this time. But we are much warmer than what we have are usually typically for our average. Our average is 37 degrees. Our high today was 53, so a 16 degree difference right there just to give you an idea just how warm it has been and still fairly mild for tonight, mostly in the low to mid 40s across the region. We are at 47 degrees right now in Deer Park at this time. Our feels like temperatures a little bit cooler than that. We've have a bit of a breeze at this time. You might be seeing that with my hair at the moment. And because we've got those breezy winds right now, we are also looking to see some breezy to gusty winds in our overnight hours, so just be prepared for that. But we are expecting those breezy conditions to stay with us into our Tuesday. Next few days looking to be mostly in the 50s. Could be pretty warm for your Wednesday. Just be prepared for that chance for some breezy winds tomorrow. Might also be a slight chance for some morning showers. I'll throw it back to you, Jen. All right, Cody, thank you. Getting into our top stories tonight, six Spokane firefighters laid off due to the vaccine mandate will soon be back on the job. City leaders made accommodations for six of the unvaccinated firefighters. Uh, they will be moved to dispatch or fire prevention. Meanwhile, a seventh firefighter is now fully vaccinated and can resume their duties. Nine firefighters still remain on active layoff lists. Now, six other retired or resigned. 52 total firefighters in Spokane filed for an exemption in August to that vaccine mandate. Tonight, a man is facing a second degree murder charge following a Spokane Valley house party. That shooting left one person dead and several more scrambling to safety. Amanda Rowley tells us what led up to that attack. The victims who escaped this shooting alive told Spokane Valley Police it was unprovoked and there were no arguments leading up to the incident. Still, many are grieving the loss of the man who died at that party Friday morning. According to Spokane County Court documents, five people went to Zachary McLaughlin's house to hang out in his basement late Thursday night. They all admitted to Spokane Valley Police they were drinking alcohol and using drugs that night. At about 4.30 Friday morning, each of the victims told detectives they saw McLaughlin go into another room in the basement and heard a loud bang. That's when they saw one of their friends fall over and crash into a coffee table. Court documents say the suspect came back into the room with a pistol and fired it multiple times. The victims took cover behind nearby furniture. Once McLaughlin stopped shooting, the four remaining victims ran outside the house and drove away to call police. Court documents say the suspect admitted to shooting at the victim, but he claims the victim shot at him first. Investigators recovered only one pistol from the scene. Family and friends identified the victim who died as 29-year-old Destin Cooper. Court documents say he was found dead at the scene with traumatic head injuries. As news of Cooper's death spread, it's become clear the number of lives he touched. Those who knew him are still processing this loss. Some of his closest friends told me they call him a brother and best friend. They say he was caring, funny, and always showed up for them. By sharing these photos and videos of Cooper, those who love him hope they will show just how much his light will be missed. Spokane Valley Police arrested McLaughlin for second-degree murder and four counts of first-degree assault. He made his first appearance in court today, and the judge kept his bond at $1 million. A GoFundMe account has been created to cover the funeral expenses for Cooper. There's also a gathering planned for this Friday from 12 to 5 p.m. at Stockwell's. Reporting from the Spokane County Courthouse, Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. Amanda, thank you. Well, looking ahead to tomorrow, Spokane Public Schools and the Spokane Public Facilities District will break ground on a new stadium in downtown Spokane. Now that is intended to replace the aging Joe Albee Stadium. Voters passed that measure back in 2018. The design will be complete next month and physical construction is slated to begin in early 2022. The new facility is set to open in fall of 2023.
Also tomorrow, a sign of the holiday season is back in Spokane. Christmas tree elegance will resume after taking a break during the pandemic. It runs tomorrow through December 12th at the historic Davenport Hotel and River Park Square. This year, 15 trees are featured with their corresponding raffle and winners will be drawn December 12th. As a reminder, all proceeds support the Spokane Symphony. All right, coming up tonight, a new COVID-19 variant is spreading around the world. It's not in the U.S. yet, according to health experts. After the break, we hear from Washington researchers on whether there is a cause for concern 